Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video I want to talk about the Starseeker line of telescopes. We've got a bunch of them. Uh, this is two representative samples, a 102 millimeter uh, MAC CAS and a 130 millimeter reflecting telescope. But they go from a, uh, a 102 MAC all the way up to a 6 inch MAC and a 6 inch reflector. So I'll tell you about the differences between them and then what makes these uh, scopes unique, the mount itself. It's a fully robotic go-to uh, motorized mount, so it'll help you find things in the night sky. So let's get started and talk about the mount first. So the Starseeker mount is a uh, simple little lightweight uh, altaz, that's altitude, up and down, azimuth, left and right, uh, go-to mount uh, that uses a standard narrow or vixen style dovetail rail to hold any, uh, uh, any small telescope up to about a six inch, uh, depending on size, but like I said, we have them up to six inches. Um, any small telescope and allows you to robotically find objects in the night sky. There are two ways to, um, uh, that the mounts come. Uh, we have packages with a hand controller or we sell them without a hand controller because, and this is probably the, the highlight feature of the mount, uh, it comes with built-in Wi-Fi. So as soon as you turn it on, it creates a, a Wi-Fi hotspot, and then you can connect to it with a smartphone or tablet, uh, either iPhone, uh, Apple, or Android, uh, using a free uh, app called the SynScan Pro. So you don't need to have a hand controller any longer. A lot of our older mounts, uh, you're tied to the hand controller. You need to use that. Um, but the, the app on the phone is very powerful. It's got a lot of features, uh, more so than what comes with a hand controller. So when you're making your decision on which scope to purchase, uh, you'll first have to decide you know, what size telescope you want. And I'll go over at the end of this video uh, what each size and design is best for. But also, if you want to get the, the base unit without a hand controller, so you power it with your smartphone, or if you want to get the package with the hand controller. Both work equally well. I think the, the um, smartphone app is the coolest way to do it. There's lots of features in it. Uh, and we'll go over in a separate video exactly what that uh, um, app can do for you. So let's focus on the mount itself. Uh, here I've got the 102 Mac. It's got a little slip clutch so you can move the thing left and right. And if you unlock this axis, you can move it up and down by hand. You're probably not going to be doing that because once you get the app connected or the uh, two-star alignment with the hand controller uh, connected, you're just going to tell the computer or the hand controller what you want to see. You hit enter, it'll go find it for you, it'll center it, and it'll continue to track on it. So a very smart system uh, requiring no touching at all. Um, however, if you do want to move it by hand, it's got built-in encoders. So on a lot of our older mounts and a lot of mounts on the market, if you were to move this thing manually after you've done the computer alignment, the computer wouldn't know you've just done that movement and it'd get lost. It, it still would think it's over here after you moved it over here manually. Well, with the encoder system inside, it's, it's listening to everything, including the, the, the commands on the uh, controller or app and the manual motions of the mount itself. So I can, let's say I wanted to look at Jupiter all the way over here on the other side of the sky. Well, you can send a command to the mount to have it slew all the way over uh, using the computer or you can just manually move it over. That'll actually save a little bit of battery power. So if, you're gonna, if you know you're going to be out for several nights and you want to save some, some power, make most of the movements by hand, get it close to the area you want to observe, and then hit go to for that last little bit just to find the object. So uh, a great way to conserve some power, uh, maybe keep the thing really quiet. Um, though when I power it up, I'll show you, it's, it's pretty whisper quiet to begin with. So a really uh, simple system for aligning and pointing. The mount is powered by uh, 12 volts, and there's two options for that. Internal 12 volt uh, via eight AA batteries, and if you just pop off the um, cover here, you can see the little battery pack. I put eight AA batteries in there. Um, the mount is pretty energy efficient. It'll, it'll go for a couple of nights of normal use like that, though if you're doing a Messier marathon where you're slewing from object to object to object, like 100 and some objects a night and just spending five seconds on each, the batteries aren't gonna last very long. But under normal conditions, going out for a couple hours each night, you'll, you'll go for several nights on the batteries. Uh, however, in the long run, uh, it's less expensive, uh, cheaper to uh, have some sort of external 12-volt source. Um, on the side here, there is a 12-volt input, and that will allow you to connect a couple of different things. Um, you can connect an AC adapter. Uh, that's available optionally. Uh, if you have an outlet in the backyard and uh, an extension cord access to an outlet, you can plug this in to an AC um, uh, wall uh, uh, jack 
and then you never have to worry about replacing batteries. That's the, probably the cheapest in the long run. Um, however, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and there's no AC power, you can also get an external 12 volt power source. We have our uh, Dynamo Pro, a lithium uh, battery, which will go for a long period of time and is very lightweight and easily portable. So that's another good option. But failing all that, you can just plug eight AA batteries into the uh, arm here and you're very mobile and uh, um, you can take this thing anywhere away from power. If you look down on the side, it's just a very simple system. There is a on-off switch. Uh, there's your power uh, jack uh, for uh, optional uh, exter external power. And then the um, RJ uh, port for the hand controller. Now, uh, if you buy the base unit, it's not going to come with anything to plug in there because you don't need it. As soon as you turn on the power, the mount will start broadcasting its own Wi-Fi hotspot and you can easily connect uh, to the smartphone and uh, start your alignment procedure. Below the base of the uh, arm of the Star Seeker tripod is a, a little accessory tray here. This is the leg spreader. It helps keep the legs solid and open to their widest. Um, and also has several cutout holes for um, storing extra accessories. All of the scopes come with two eyepieces, a low power and a medium high. And while you're using one, you can put the other one in here. There's diagonals. Uh, uh, anything you need to kind of keep close by, you can leave in the accessory tray. The tripod itself is extendable. Uh, right now I've got them at their highest position um, or close to the highest position. Um, so you can see here, if you're using a Mac with a diagonal, you can bend over and look through um, and still stand up. Though I, I usually recommend lowering the tripod a little bit, getting yourself a good uh, drummer stool or, or small, uh, small chair. That's the most comfortable way to view. Also, when everything's lower down, it's just inherently more stable. So I, I think it's more comfortable to be sitting and viewing. Uh, with a reflector, the eyepiece is a little bit higher up just because of the nature of, of the design of the, of the tube. So right here at its highest point, I can just easily lean over and look through it. Uh, but again, you can lower this down and get yourself a chair and be more comfortable. Uh, in terms of included accessories, uh, like I said, all of the telescopes come with two eyepieces. You get a 23 millimeter low power, and over here I've got the 10 millimeter high magnification. They're wide angle lenses, um, so low power, wide field, and even the high power has a pretty decently wide field of view. It's not a little pinhole to look through, so a comfortable, comfortable view. Uh, if you have a reflector, that's really all you need. You just stick the eyepiece straight in. With the Max, uh, it also comes with an elbow, this 90 degree elbow. So you're looking downwards this way into the telescope uh, while looking up into the sky. And the diagonal, uh, the mirror di or the, the, the diagonal comes standard with the 102, uh, the 127, and the 150 Mac. And finally, all of the uh, telescopes come with a finder scope. This is our easy finder. Um, it's a red dot finder. So you look through it, you see a little dot floating in the sky. Once you've aligned it with the main optical axis, you'd really just use it for the initial two-star alignment procedure. Uh, point the dot at the star that you're aligning on, make sure it's centered in the eyepiece, move to the second star, do the same thing, and then you can shut this thing off. You don't need the finder anymore because this is a robotic telescope, so it finds everything for you. And the, the mount is accurate enough to get uh, any object within the field of view of the low power eyepiece in any of the scopes. So you're, you're guaranteed to hit your object, as long as you're careful uh, uh, centering each star in the uh, two-star alignment procedure. As long as that's good, the, the go-to is very accurate. All right, well, let's talk about the three uh, different sizes in each uh, design and then which ones you might choose and what they're, they're good for. So let's start with the Max. So here's the 102 Mac. This is the smallest Mac we've got with, uh, uh, as a package with the, uh, with the mount. This is the five inch, the 127 millimeter. There's also a 150 millimeter, which is one inch wider than this and probably about two inches longer. Um, so those are the three sizes, 102, 127, and 150. On the reflector side, this is the, the 130 millimeter, and I've got two bracketing it. This is the 114, the smallest reflector that fits on this mount, or that comes as a package with this. And then on the other side, we have 150 millimeter, which really is only about uh, two inches longer than this and about an inch fatter. So it's, it's almost the same size as this, just quite slightly bigger. Uh, but it sucks in more light because it's bigger aperture. Same with the uh, 127 or 150 Mac. Now, the big question, how do you choose between all those different sizes? Well, the, the simplest difference between the two is the Macs are smaller, more compact, and the reflector is a little bit longer, but less expensive because mirror systems, like a, a simple reflector with two mirrors, is easier to manufacture than a Mac system with a mirror and a lens system. So, 
uh, more compact for transportability. Let's say you're going on a flight and you want something that will definitely fit in the overhead compartment. Well, all of the Mac optical tubes will definitely fit in the overhead, uh, whereas the reflectors get kind of unwieldy. But if you want to save some money and still get the same bigger aperture, reflectors are great. They're, they're probably my favorite for getting big aperture and saving some money. A six inch reflector sucks in the same amount of light as a six inch uh, 150 millimeter Mac. Six inches, 150 millimeters. Um, but a six inch reflector is um, much less expensive uh, than a six inch Mac. So bang for your buck, you get a lot more uh, deep sky viewing with the reflector. Then you just have to decide on the size. So 102, uh, 127, 150. 114, 130, 150. Well, there's, there's no two ways about it. The bigger the scope, the more light it sucks in and the more you see. It'll be a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, a little more expensive, but you get more resolution and more light grasp. Um, the 102 uh, here is great for lunar and planetary detail. You can see the rings with Saturn, uh, cloud belts on Jupiter, moons around Jupiter. Uh, it'll look like you're in orbit around the moon. I mean, when you're looking at craters on the moon, you'll be right up on top of some of those uh, individual craters. And of course, you can always add on different eyepieces to zoom in or get a wider field of view. But a small Mac like this is ideal for lunar and planetary. If your main goal is deep sky objects, seeing the faintest possible objects, I wouldn't recommend a small one like this. I'd go bigger, the 127, the 150 better yet. Uh, same thing here, not the 114, though that's, the, that's probably the starting point for seeing deep sky objects in pretty good detail, the, the 114 millimeter reflector. Um, that's also one of the less expensive ones. So that's a good kind of all around starting point if you want to get your feet wet and see what you can uh, do with these guys. The reflectors can also see uh, moon and planetary detail, though out of the box, the focal length is a little bit shorter on these guys than it is on the Max. I know it kind of doesn't look that way. This one, this thing is really short and this thing is pretty long. But the Max, the way it works, they, they bounce the light inside a couple of times. And if you unfolded this thing, the, the focal length of the 102 here is 1300 millimeters. The 130 reflector here, this is 650. So this is like half the focal length of this one. So what that means is you put the same eyepiece over here it'll be half the magnification. So at first you might think, oh, well, that's, that's no good. I want high power, you know, you need high power for astronomy. Well, for planetary detail, yes, you want high power and Macs are great at that. They, they give you a lot of magnification out of the box. You can still go to the same high magnification with this one. You just have to add on maybe a Barlow lens, which doubles the power or some other eyepiece um, to, to zoom in further. So the, the top magnification is still based on the diameter, not really the, the, the focal length. Uh, the other side of that is actually low power works quite well for a lot of big deep sky objects. So high power would be bad in that instance. So let's say you're trying to look at the Pleiades star cluster or the Andromeda galaxy, which is, are very big objects in the sky. The field of view here is too narrow to kind of sweep up the whole thing plus some black sky around it to kind of get a good perspective. So a low power big aperture scope is ideal for the big deep sky objects. So I'd say if you're trying to decide um, if your main goal is uh, deep sky objects getting as much light as possible and getting a nice wide field of view, the bigger the reflector, the better. And if your goal is as good planetary detail as possible and high contrast, um, and you don't really care about the field of view being a little bit narrower, then the bigger the Mac, the better, because you've got more resolution and finer detail to be seen on moon and planetary detail. It, these guys can still do deep sky objects, and the bigger uh, Mac would also be better. The, the 150 millimeter, the six inch Mac that we've got, uh, it actually has the ability to put two inch eyepieces on it. Uh, and two inch eyepieces exist in the lowest power and the widest field of view. So there's another uh, good way to get a little bit lower power out of a Mac for some deep sky views. Add on a nice big low power two inch eyepiece. Uh, one other difference uh, between the two designs is um, the uh, right side up or upside down nature of the views. A reflector, the image is upside down pretty much always and there's really no way to correct it. But you don't need to correct it because it's just for the night sky. Um, when you're looking at the Orion Nebula, there is no up and down in space, so who really cares, right? But if you wanted to use this for daytime spotting, let's say you wanted to look at the boats on the bay or the hikers on the mountain, a reflector is not a good choice. The uh, Mac design, uh, by definition with this 90 degree elbow included, gives you an upright image. Now it is a mirror image, it's left and right reversed, but it's upright. So if you're looking at a boat out there, you know, everything's going to look somewhat normal. The, the ocean water will be below you and the sky will be above you. Uh, but if you try to read the name of the boat, it will be backwards as if you're looking in a mirror. 
you can actually fix that by getting a different type of prism. We have a 45 degree or a 90 degree correct image prism, which will allow you to use this uh, during the day and read the names of the boats and see everything in exactly correct image uh, nature. Now, you might ask, well, why don't we just include that and use that for astronomy? You actually don't want that extra uh, correction uh, in the prism for astronomy. The way that the light bends through those prisms, if you have a point source, like a star, it'll diffract. You get a little diffraction spike on them. So it's, it's just not as clean of an image. So a standard star diagonal for astronomy is what you want to look at the sky, upright but a mirror image. And then during the day, if you want, you can add a different prism to fix the left and right the mirror image. So like I mentioned previously, uh, there are two ways to purchase the Star Seeker 4 uh, telescopes. The standalone telescope and base with built-in Wi-Fi to connect to your smartphone. But if you don't have a smartphone for some reason, uh, or you just don't want to pull it out at night, you can get the package that includes the SynScan controller. Uh, this is a very simple system. It has 42,000 objects, 42,000 plus objects in the database. And it just plugs directly into the little RJ jack there and you turn it on, and then you just feed it some info. Uh, you have to tell it your latitude, longitude, uh, time and date, and then it'll save that. And then as long as you're just set up in the same location each night, uh, you just have to do the two-star alignment. And now you've got full go-to control without needing a uh, smartphone to do it. In addition to the six options of telescope and mount packages, we also sell the mount by itself. Let's say you already have a small telescope um, that uses a Vixen dovetail. Well, you can bolt your own onto this. So you can just get the Altaz mount uh, separate from a telescope and save a little bit of money. All right, well, there you have it. As you can see, there are a lot of telescopes to choose from, but hopefully uh, I gave you a little bit of info that you can use to, to make the decision a little bit easier. Uh, from a 102 millimeter Mac to a 150 millimeter Mac, from a 114 millimeter reflector to the 150 millimeter uh, reflector, um, and the mount by itself in case you already have your own. Built-in Wi-Fi, option for using a hand controller, a very smart system for a fully robotic go-to telescope uh, that's fairly lightweight and very easy to use. All right, thank you very much. Clear skies.